Hey guys, it's there's a hint of fall in the air. It's probably uh, a delusion because in California, I've seen it be 80 on Christmas Day. But anyway, let's pretend it's fall and it's time to get pumpkin out. Remember pumpkin? Thanks, Luther and Cody on the back there. This is one of my earliest guitars. But I got to thinking, I have never discussed one of the most important things about the guitars we build, and that's this thing that lets you electrify these things. <laughs> the jack this is what we're going to be talking about today gives us this well in some cases very pleasant <laughs> i think the fact that luther dickinson touched this is what makes this work that is luther's three string tuning you want to know what it is <laughs> there's a line buddy Hey, you hear that music in the background? That's R.L. Burnside. Yeah, there it is. I should have been better prepared. The CD or album is Burnside on Burnside. Uh, this is when he started electrifying his music. Burnside on Burnside. Um, R.L. Burnside, Fat Possum Records. So, check that out. I'll give you a link below. Anyway, let's quit playing around and figure out everything you wanted to know about a jack and more let's hit the bench psych i forgot to tell you subscribe give me a like uh when you subscribe you get a notification my subscriber list is really starting to grow now i think i got the whole state of mississippi anyway that said let's finally get to the bench that's right rl he ain't your daddy, but he don't know it. Do you know it? Here, let me tell you what I know. I got to get some of this stuff off of my bench. I got other hobbies. I'm, I'm quite a cultured person, you can tell. You see this? You know what this is right here? This is called dust art. You see that? Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Next thing you know, I'm going to be doing haikus and other cultured things. But I got to show you this. Look at this prize. I just got this. I found this is really old. I used to work for Bill Jackson Rig Company. Look at this lighter. And um, it's got to be 35 years old. I saw one like it. This might be the same one that I saw when I worked for the company. And when I ordered it on eBay and found it, it came in the package, I'll be damned. I opened it up and it was still lit. Anyway, the flame on this thing is brighter than a pretty woman's face in the moonlight sun. So there we go. I'm going to put that back in the background where you can see it. See it? It's going to be right there. Ain't that pretty? Okay, let's get this out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about what else I got going on here. One more time, burn side on burn side in the background. But check this out. Um, it is time to build another license plate guitar for the high school. Vasquez High School. So the mommies said, you know, they were voting on what they wanted and they they wanted a license plate guitar. So I had to order this VHS 2020. That's what they like. You better give the mommies what they like or you ain't going to be around long, son. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. There's a reason I have these Camacho boxes out and we're going to figure out what that is. Um, I'm still working on this White Owl box. Um, you see all this in here, all this uh, reinforcement and all that. I did a bo I did something called stabilizing a vintage box. I'm going to give you a link to that right up there right now. You're going to want to catch that one so you know what's going on in here. But what we're going to focus on right here now is I'm going to put a jack on here, one here and one here. Uh, there's going to be a piezo underneath the bridge and that's going to sit right there and there's also going to be a coil sitting in the bridge position look at this puppy the artist actually picked this out and sent it so what's going to end up happening is this bridge is going to sit about right there giving the person all kinds of room to play up here anyway let's start off with looking at what the different types of jacks are and why i use the ones i do hey i wanted you to check this out i cut this slide out of a blue bottle works pretty good probably ship this one off to england because that uh that uh shot up california license plate goes to um uh 
England to a female out there and you're gonna see it soon hey look at this marble ain't that pretty hey don't green and blue make the perfect combination or what look at me shaking no I don't need a drink at least I don't think so okay back to reality I'm gonna show you the basic types of jacks we can use to see this one everybody knows this one this is one we all start with it's got a hot and a ground and your jack clips right in there you know what I should grab the cable and show you how this works you see how that's bent that's because it got yanked out from the guitar or dropped or something like that so uh, this has a lot to do with why I want to uh, use a jack that's appropriate now look this slips right in here you see how that catches that right there like not really um, anyway that's how they work so this is the kind we usually use uh, and uh, look at this one I like this one it's called a pin and jack because you can actually use this for a guitar strap I don't but this thing is long it's durable it screws on um, and this pops in here like this works the same way you've got a ground and a hot wire right there and then there's all kinds of different ones that kind of go this one is more so like this one than this one now let's talk about why I pick this one typically there are times I use this one let's start with that okay you remember my coffee can guitar that's signed by virtually everybody yeah, Burnside, Cedric Burnside, it's Burnside Day people, and then all these other people do not covet this, check that out, it never ends, anyway, I use this kind of jack on here, why, look at the thickness of the metal, you see that, it's not too thick, and because the space here, it's not that thick, so this might be good for something thin like this, I don't have enough hands here or a thin box like this another one of my old white owl boxes you see how thin that wood is but there's a glitch here I'm gonna tell you about all right let's flip this open let's say I want to put this right here and I drill the hole and you see that'll work I got enough uh, sticking out to get threads on it but the problem with this is these boxes are pretty thin and fragile even if I use some stiffener like there you go Earl Lube paste Bubba man I'm so good to you brother anyway let's get that back in its normal spot the only thing in my shop that's in its normal spot anyway you start yanking on this here there's just this bolt there's just a, a nut holding it on here next thing you know you rip off the back of the box so how do we address that well we got some jack plates that we can put this into and it kind of reinforces it and and that might make it stronger but all that does is transfer the load on this or the weight or the stress or whatever you want to call it um, to two points out here they rip out and you got the same problem you can go to something more extravagant like this and different colors and stuff but um, colors and shiny don't give you structural integrity believe you me so let's look at the boxes I have to make sure that I oh, I should have checked this first to make sure I didn't shoplift anything and put it in there and sneak it out of the store but luckily this isn't one of them I did that with so let's pick this up this is Camacho 60 by 6 my favorite box and if we put this here look at that there's not enough room for it to get through so the first couple of times I did that I'm scrambling away over here because I'm not prepared I'm taking Forstner bits and trying to, this is a Forstner bit, obviously not the right size, but I'll be taking and trying to figure out how I'm going to drill a Forstner bit hole right here and have an indent where this thing sits down in there because it's not long enough one more time to get through the box. So I'd simply drill in that far plus enough for the nut. But that is a huge hassle and I'll tell you what unless you got the right size drill it is hard to get a drill in here you end up with a crooked hole and everything messed up so Camacho boxes it's your fault that I quit using this kind of jack on cigar boxes so let me get all this stuff put away yeah this is not for sale um, just because I'm putting these boxes aside don't mean that you can have them or want them or covet them um, 
but we'll put all these aside over here and get down to getting all these pieces out of here. I could have been much better prepared. Um, but here we go, let's move this over here. I want to show you a couple things here. Once again, see the uh, episode um, stabilizing a vintage box and I want to point out a couple things here with my me for school board pencil. You see, I just took uh, a Your Father's cigar box, cut it up, made end plates. I'm going to reinforce, remember this one, pocket protector. Those are going to go right there like that ultimately. But I want to point out to you that I knew that I was going to put the jacks back here. You'll see that the pieces that I put in here up here are turned this way. Can you see that? Yeah. And then, but the pieces here are turned this way. I can't run a jack through, I can't run uh, the jack I want to use through a piece of this sideways like this, but certainly back here. So those are there. Now I caulked all this in. It's nice and um, um, solid. Everything's solid. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to stick these the jacks in here, one here and one here. Remember, piezo and coil are going on this one. Okay, so I haven't attached the lid yet. We're going to put that out of the way. And do you see how I built this? You see that this is sticking up a little bit here, and this is sticking up, and the neck goes through that pocket. Can you see it? Well, maybe if I illuminate it with my Bill Jackson lighter, you can see it. Can you see it now? You sure do. So check me out. What's going to happen here is, look at that. I can pull that right out because I haven't set it up yet. Now once I do have everything the way I want it, I'm going to put a couple pieces of wood underneath like this way and then put the neck on top of that. This one will be as long as the box. Anyway, getting way out in the weeds here, but now I can just turn this up and I can eyeball where... Where's my election pencil? Right there. I know that the, these are 38 millimeters. <laughs> Got your metric hater. Where's my ruler? There it is. Look, it has inches. We will not be using that. We'll be using this. So this is 38. So I'm going to mark 19 on this one and 19 on this one. Now, I'm going to know that this is 60 that makes it easy so i'm going to have a mark about 30. i'm going to flip this around have another mark about 30. and remember i want to make sure that i've got those side that's marked this way so i can put the jack through this way and have plenty of room to do it and not this way you see so i've got a mark at 30 right there so i can take my slide rule I can bring it down on that mark and then kind of eyeball it where I'm going to start drilling my I'm going to let my baby ride man right um man I wish I could see my camera they say I like looking in a mirror at myself I don't know anyway there you go so I got a mark there a mark there now I'm going to take this bit and drill a pilot hole there and there and go all the way through there and there. Now getting into the world of high precision, you see this jack, you see this, that matches that just about, but it's smaller than that and that's the idea. So once we drill our pilot hole, we're going to take this Forstner bit and we're going to go all the way through. Let's see what that looks like. Wasn't that thrilling? Now, I'm going to show you another little trick here. On slide guitar, Mr. Kenny Brown, that's right. See, I don't want to mar up this paper too much by... Listen up. This Forstner bit's going to tear up this paper. Just like me throwing a box around wheel. Anyway. 
if I put this countersink tool on here and just touch that like that before I drill it, look at that, good to go. I got to do another one like this right over here. Now we're just going to do this. Start there. So I'm going to take a little razor knife and cut this down. But this will cover more than cover that up here like so. Let me go through all the way through there. There we go. That worked. One more to do right here. Don't imagine you want to watch that. All right, there we go. Easy money. Now, all I got to do is take a little razor knife if I can find one. There it is, like so. And then just go around here like this. Make my cuts around here. And level this hole off like so. Bingo. And you spend your whole life doing that. Anyway, now these drop in right like there. Look at that, ain't that pretty? And then I'm just going to take a small bit, pre drill these holes here. You want to remember because that block is back there like that, that is going to mount solid right there. Last trick I got to tell you is you don't want to put these in and then try and wire them like that. So, you see, you don't have no room to work here. Light this box on fire and everything else. So, what you want to do is you want to take your wire, your spool of wire, and feed it up through here like this. And make your soldering connections out here with this like so. And then you pull it through and mount it. And when you got these for your jacks, you can't beat them and then last little tip is if you do want to put a, um, a guitar strap a knob on here uh, you might want to put one of these over here move it a little bit closer or something like that but the nice thing about this is is these tail pieces that I build like this now once this slides through the box let's see if it'll fit in there there it goes and we put that back in here I want you to notice that this tail piece sticks out far enough that it actually protects where the guitar cable plugs in and I like that too so I don't know whether I did that on purpose or or just stumbled across it but there's the easy ins and outs of guitar jacks and I hope this helped you out a ton last thing i'm gonna do is inspect this make sure nothing cut loose here and then i can start wiring this stuff up mounting these screws and then um hey i want to give out a shout out to brian j you are a very patient man this will get to you sooner than later <laughs> all right there you go everything you want to know about jacks and more you're smart in wikipedia right now and i'm not going to ask you for three dollars to keep me going hey i'm gonna close out one more time rl burnside burnside on burnside i'll tell you a little something you probably didn't know did you know that about 96 or so when uh rl burnside was turned europe and uh, he was missing one member of his band and the opening band was somebody named Do-Rag. Do you know who did a couple shows on slide guitar for R.L. Burnside? Do you know? That's right. Bob Log the Third, baby. Okay. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.